Good morning, uh, good, uh, good afternoon, and a very warm welcome to all of you uh, who joined uh, today's webinar uh, brought to you from uh, Swift Kanban from Digite. Uh, the webinar is Probabilistic Approach to Project Planning with Demeter Tokarjie. Let me get on with uh, introductions and the agenda, etc., and uh, let's get started right, right away with the webinar. So we'll do a quick set of introductions and uh, uh, followed that by a uh, very short introduction to the sponsor, uh, Swift Kanban. Uh, and then I'll hand over the uh, session to Demeter to uh, make, a, make his presentation on probabilistic approach to project planning. Uh, I'm very happy to also have today uh, Dr. Ramesh Patil, uh, CTO of Digite, who will facilitate the uh, Q&A session. And if we get time at the end, we may do a short uh, overview of Swift Kanban. Before we get started, uh, just some housekeeping agenda items. Uh, uh, please feel free uh, anytime during the session to uh, post your questions through the uh, Q&A box um, uh, and we will take the Q questions at the end of the uh, uh, presentation by Demeter. Uh, we will try and group them by topic but uh, uh, typically we have tended to take them uh, on a sort of first come first serve basis uh, and we'll try and answer uh, most of them. If we can't address all of them then we will be very happy to uh, follow those questions up after the webinar is done. Uh, also, the webinar is being recorded and the slides in the recording uh, will be made available after the webinar is done uh, through a follow-up email that we will send out. Uh, very happy to introduce uh, today's speaker, uh, Dimitar, uh, Dimitar Bagajev is uh, Marketing Director uh, of Toller Technologies in Bulgaria. Uh, he's an expert in driving successful and cost-effective technology development. Uh, as a Lean Kanban University accredited Kanban trainer and an avid uh, Kanban expert, uh, Demeter puts lean principles to work every day when managing complex software projects with a special focus on building innovative, powerful mobile CRM solutions for Oracle CRM on demand and Salesforce.com users. Demeter has uh, been one of the uh, leading proponents and evangelists of Kanban in his uh, native Bulgaria and has uh, published uh, David Anderson's Kanban book uh, as well as other books uh, on uh, theory of constraints by Goldratt and Deming's theory of management in the local language. Uh, he's also a lecturer and a frequent speaker at numerous conferences and industry functions. And uh, his passion is to educate audiences on the benefits of lean principles and agile methodologies for software development. I'd also like to introduce uh, Dr. Ramesh Patil, uh, CTO at uh, Digitae Swift Kanban. Uh, Ramesh brings to Digitae over 30 years of rich experience as an academician, uh, entrepreneur, and technologist. Ramesh is a pioneer in the field of artificial intelligence uh, and has served on the faculty of computer science at MIT and University of Southern California uh, Information Science Institute. Uh, prior to joining Digite, Ramesh was uh, CTO at Rightworks and I2 Technologies, uh, and he's also a fellow of the American Association for uh, Artificial Intelligence. Uh, my name is Mahesh Singh. I'm co-founder and uh, senior vice president of product at uh, Digite Swift Karma. Uh, just a quick uh, introduction to Digite, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with us. Uh, we've, been, uh, we've been a pioneer in web-based collaborative uh, products and solutions for geographically distributed uh, teams uh, for the last uh, over 10-12 uh, years. Uh, we had quartered in Cupertino, California um, and have over 300,000 active users of our products in um, around the world, uh, especially Americas, Europe and the Asia Pacific. Uh, our products cover Lean Kanban, Agile, ALM and Project Portfolio Management and of course uh, Swift Kanban is our flagship uh, Lean Kanban product. Uh, just a quick overview of that. Uh, so we provide a very visual um, interface for uh, managing a variety of uh, uh, activities, especially software development, IT, uh, ops, and DevOps management. Uh, and uh, here is a screenshot of uh, one of one such uh, uh, Kanban board. Uh, of course, our product is also being used by a variety of other functions, including marketing, uh, you know, sales, uh, HR, and recruitment, and so on and so forth. And uh, we've also seen uh, people use it for some very uh, uh, personal. Uh, uh, you know, users such as the party, uh, doing a uh, doing a uh, Thanksgiving party planning or a variety of other functions, including managing your children's homework and things like that. Uh, we provide a bunch of uh, analytics, uh, which have uh, which has been a focus for us for um, you know uh, right since the beginning. And, and in our latest release, uh, which we announced yesterday, uh, we've done a number of interesting things uh, on the analytics up front. Uh, if you haven't uh, taken a look at those, uh, I invite you to do that. Uh, I'd also like to uh, put in a quick word for Swift Sim, uh, our simulation tool, which is based on the Monte Carlo method or for uh, simulation and forecasting of projects. 
uh, it is integrated with Swift Kanban and you know helps you model and simulate existing or uh, new Kanban systems behavior uh, and has a you know variety of features that uh, you'd like to try out if you are interested in trying out our, our tool uh, uh, you are more than welcome to contact our sales team uh, that will give you a sense of uh, what the tool can do for you and here are quick uh, you know uh, screenshots on uh, what Swift Sim can do uh, here is a single run mode where it uh, where you can model a, a, a Kanban board and see the sees behavior uh, and then of course you can do uh, you know run it multiple times hundreds of thousands of times as you do in a Monte Carlo uh, method and then get the uh, you know sort of overall results of the uh, simulation and make uh, decisions in terms of your modeling of the Kanban system based on that. Uh, uh, we, overall we have a very extensive uh, lean agile uh, application lifecycle management stack and you know variety of tools uh, that allow you to uh, mo model and manage your uh, software and uh, IT and other related projects uh, in your organization. Uh, and finally a quick uh, slide on our customers as you can see uh, we have a you know, very well uh, established range of customers uh, and recognized brands around the world that are uh, using Digitae, Swift Kanban and uh, other products of uh, Digitae as well. So with that I'd like to hand over the uh, session to Demeter. Demeter a very warm welcome to you. Uh, thank you, Manish. Let me let me share my screen. Uh, it should be. Yeah, uh, I hope everybody can see uh, the first slide, the deck. So, uh, uh, yet hello. Yet. Not yet. No. Not yet. Yeah. Now, now you can see it. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, hello everybody and thank you for attending this presentation. My name is Dimitar and with this video I'll try to show you <coughs> how uh, you can use Monte Carlo simulation for predicting the delivery time for your next project. I will go pretty quickly through the slides and focus on how to simulate project delivery time using Monte Carlo simulation uh, in uh, Microsoft Excel. Clients uh, come to us with an idea for a product and they always ask the questions, how long will it take and how much will it cost us to deliver? They need a delivery date and a budget estimate. Management has to plan and predict in order to make sure they have the financial means and uh, resources for all the projects uh, the company has. So here you can see a quote from uh, W. Edwards Deming, which I uh, like a lot and it's uh, it's all about what management is. Uh, high-level planning, uh, this presentation will be focused on uh, high-level planning. So high-level planning is uh, planning the initial budget and also the range of the time frame for a project. It does not include detailed project plans. This will be developed later. We don't plan in detail what is not absolutely necessary to plan. So the plan itself <coughs> is created with the appropriate buffers protecting the decisions that have to be included in the plan. The short-term details, like the scheduling, are done based on the immediate needs and capabilities of the development organization and we look on these schedules as the execution of the higher level plan. High level plan needs to be defined with built-in recognition and embracement of the variability and the randomness inherent in every project. So I, I would say that we can't control the waves, the waves of uncertainty, but we can learn how to surf. Uh, we uh, propose a probabilistic approach for preparing high level plans based on existing historical statistical data recorded about a software development organization or a team and utilizing Monte Carlo simulation uh, predictions can be made that could be used for uh, planning new projects. Uh, does the customer actually uh, ever ask for a project to be delivered or maybe a project is just a, a vehicle or a container for managing risk? Uh, we challenge the project management paradigm and suggest uh, that it is better to model projects as a flow of work items through a system. A project is just a batch of, uh, uh, of work items uh, uh, taken out from the flow of work. Uh, 
so say the flow processes thousands of uh, work items. Uh, we can name a batch of some 100 work items a project, but uh, we have statistical data for the flow itself, and we will be using uh, this data. So hence the definition of a project. A project is a batch of work items, each one representing independent customer value that must be delivered on or before a due date. The batch can contain even only one work item. Uh, the size of the work item uh, doesn't matter. Uh, there are only two sizes, uh, small enough and too big. Too big should be naturally split by a mature development organization or a team and not allowed to enter the backlog of the project. Uh, here is an animation how a batch of work items uh, or a project flows through a Kanban board. Initially, all work items are in the backlog and then they flow through the board and end up into a deployed or completed column. Uh, this is a cumulative flow diagram from a real project. It visualizes the rate at which the work items uh, were delivered. So it's actually historical data for us. On the x-axis, we have the project time in days. On the y-axis, we have the number of work items delivered uh, each day. We will be using the data behind this diagram in order to predict delivery date for future projects. It turns out that uh, the delivery rate or the throughput follows a z-curve pattern as visualized by the uh, red line here. The z-curve can be divided uh, in three parts or we can say it has three legs. Uh, there is empirical evidence here that 20 percent of the time the delivery rate will be slow then for around 60 percent of the time will be going uh, faster or it's uh, called the hyper productivity period and then uh, for the last 20 percent of the time till the end will go slowly again. Of course, uh, num these numbers may vary depending on the context, but the basic principle about the three section uh, is empirically validated. Only the second leg of the Z-curve is representative for the development system capability. It shows the common cause variation specific to each development system process. First and third legs of the Z-curve are project specific and are affected uh, by special cause variation in this case. Uh, the first leg of the Z-curve is the time when the developers climb the, the learning curve uh, and set up their minds for the new project. Uh, but this leg of the Z-curve could also be used for uh, conducting experiments or spikes to cover the, uh, the, most, the riskiest work items. Uh, or setting up environments, uh, adapting to client's culture, um, or understanding new business domain, uh, mastering new technology, accepting client's procedure, etc., etc. So it's a setup time. All above are example of special causes of variation specific for, for to, to each particular project, and uh, that's why uh, they represent a, a kind of a different work type. And as you can see later, actually they have a different uh, uh, delivery time profile and risk profile. The second leg of the Z-curve is the uh, productivity period. If the project is scheduled properly, the sh system uh, should be like a clockwork in this stage uh, with sustainable, sustainable pace, no stress, no surprises. Uh, the third leg of the Z-curve is when the team will clean up uh, the battlefield uh, fix some outstanding defects and support the transition of the project deliverable into operation. Let me just move it here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, the project uh, delivery time, you are taking uh, the Z curve as, as a basis, can be represented as a, the, the sum of the duration of each one 
of the three legs of the z-curve, like that's common sense, right? Uh, or in other words, it uh, equals the duration of the first leg plus the duration of the second leg plus the duration of the third leg of the z-curve. And we will be using uh, this uh, simple uh, logic in order to uh, pro project the delivery time. So the, the metric uh, that we will be using is the tag time. Uh, so what is tag time? Tag time is the time between two successive deliveries. Here uh, you can see a simple diagram presenting the delivery rate for a fictitious project. Each delivered work item is represented by a, a yellow box. On the left we have the start date, the project, and on the right we have the end date. We can see that uh, five days after the project started, the first work item was delivered uh, and its tag time is uh, five days. Again, the tag time is the time between two, two successive deliveries. Uh, seven days after that, two new work items were delivered. Uh, so now what is their tag time? The first work item uh, has a tag time of seven days, but the second one would have a tag time of zero, zero days. Uh, we are measuring in days. Uh, this is because the time between the two work items is uh, less than a day and it, we call it like a zero. It is, uh, it is not uh, zero minutes, but since we measure tag time in days, it is zero days. And then uh, two days after that, uh, three new work items uh, were delivered and according to the definition of the tag time, uh, one of them uh, uh, had a tag time of two days, but uh, the other two work items both had a tag time of zero days. And as uh, we uh, see how it went, uh, eventually all of the work items were delivered. So important thing to note here is that the total sum of all the tag time values equals the delivery time of the entire project. And this uh, uh, will, uh, this notion will be a uh, basis uh, for our uh, simulation uh, in the next uh, few uh, minutes. Uh, so how we measure tag time? In manufacturing, uh, they measure tag time in hours, minutes, even in seconds when it's uh, mass production. In knowledge work, we measure tag time in days. That's why uh, we had work items with tag time of zero days. Uh, another important thing uh, that we'll be using is uh, the average tag time. Average tag time for a project or for a batch of work items is calculated by dividing the time over which the project is uh, or will be delivered by the number of work items delivered. For instance, if we have 20 days delivery time and we have 20 work items delivered during these 20 days, the average tag time would be one day. Uh, that means that on average, the time between two successive deliveries was one day. So here in the formula, T is the time period over which the project uh, will be delivered or was delivered. And N, uh, capital N is the number of items to be delivered or the total arrivals in, this, in the delivery period. If we have the average time for a, uh, for a development system and we have the number of work items to be delivered, we can calculate how much time on average, that's very important on average, will take the system to deliver, uh, let's say, 20 work items. So the formula here is uh, uh, we uh, multiply average tag time by the number of work items delivered and we end up with the average delivery time for the project. Uh, 
here here comes the mm, the the way we will be using this uh, this formula. So in order to find the the delivery date for a particular project, the average delivery date for a project, we uh, we will be uh, summing up the delivery time for each of the three legs of the Z curve. And here you can see the the delivery time represented by uh, using the previous formula, this one, uh, for each of the uh, legs of the Z curve and the sum of all three will provide us with the average delivery time for the whole project. And here comes the very, a very important point. We should not use the average stack time uh, as a single number, but we should use the distribution of the average stack time instead. That's the, that's the core of this uh, presentation. So this comes from uh, from a uh, mathematical theorem called uh, Jensen uh, Jensen's uh, inequality, named after uh, da the Danish mathematician uh, uh, Johan Jensen, uh, which relates the value of uh, well the function of the of the integral to the convex, convex function. It, in, sh in plain words, it would. Uh, say that the average of the output is greater or lesser than the value calculated based on the average of the input of all nonlinear functions. So it's uh, the topic of this presentation is not to go t into math, math. So you can uh, you can uh, Google for it, Jason's uh, inequality, and you will uh, uh, read it by uh, yourself. Uh, another important uh, component of uh, the approach that I present is the stochastic information packet, uh, or SIP, which represents uh, an uncertainty as an array of possible outcomes. So it is a concept from uh, op operation uh, research, and uh, uh, actually it, it's uh, it comprised of a list of trials of some uncertain parameter. So it's, uh, uh, it represents actually a kind of a, a footprint for a specific process. Uh, every, every SIP or stochastic information packet is unique. Uh, we cannot compare one uh, development system's historical delivery data with another, with, the da with data from another system. Uh, if we uh, if we do have uh, historical data uh, about the um, the average stack time, uh, it will be invalidated if any of the following happens. If, for instance, the team structure is changed, development process is changed, technology being used is changed. Uh, if anything of of the above is changed, all historical data will be invalidated and. Uh, stochastic information packet itself will be invalidated. So we will be building, we'll first we'll be collecting stochastic information packets and I'll show you uh, shortly. Uh, so here is the algorithm that we'll be following for uh, projecting project delivery uh, time. Uh, first uh, we will uh, have to collect average stack time data for each of the z-curves uh, of a baseline project. So the baseline project is a project for our development system that uh, we, uh, we uh, accept as a representative for, uh, for a specific context. Uh, the team that, uh, that worked on it, the technology, uh, the client, the business domain, so it, we will be collecting uh, stochastic data about a specific context. So if we have different clients in different teams using different technologies in different business domains, we should end up with uh, a, a list, a range of different uh, baseline projects and uh, calculate uh, uh, stochastic packets for each one of them. Uh, then uh, the second uh, step uh, uh, we will be using uh, Monte Carlo simulation to generate actually this uh, uh, the average stack time distribution for each of the Z curve legs. And we will be storing this distribution, 
for uh, for a future use. So first, uh, again, we have uh, a range of uh, types of uh, of projects. Context like context uh, dependent, and based on this historical data, we will be generating uh, average stack time uh, distributions and use this generated distribution for uh, making uh, for projecting future delivery dates for future project so the the uh, mathematical uh, name for this approach is uh, I, I, I believe is called uh, uh, reference class forecasting and then when we have uh, this uh, uh, project uh, stochastic information packages where I'll show you how we can uh, project delivery time for a new project uh, uh, using uh, more take Carlo simulation and then we will f uh, we'll find uh, uh, the 85th percentile, the delivery time, and we will be using this as, uh, as the, the single number that will go into uh, the project charta and eventually will be communicated uh, to our clients. So let me switch to, to Excel. Yeah. First, uh, uh, so uh, here is, uh, is uh, uh, I have data on this uh, sheet, throughput tag time. I have data from a real project. Uh, so we have the data, let's say, collected here. So uh, in, the, in the column done date here, which is column B, uh, we we have uh, we populate the dates when the when uh, work items uh, were delivered. So you can see like the project started on uh, uh, June 14th, and uh, we have uh, first delivery on uh, June 16th, and after that we have uh, delivery after delivery. And then uh, in the next uh, the, the the next column in column C. We have the number of work items delivered uh, uh, at, uh, at each, uh, each particular date. So for instance, on uh, June uh, 16th, we had uh, one work item delivered. But on uh, July 20th, uh, we had four work items delivered, and so and so, till we see uh, all, uh, all uh, uh, work items delivered till the end. Right. It's uh, this project contained 238 work items. So this is our baseline project. Uh, we will we will uh, we will be using this project for for cal for for uh, for cal deliver uh, for calculating the stochastic information packet for this for this kind of project, and we will be using uh, for predicting delivery time for similar projects. Uh, next in column D, we have the tag time uh, for each delivery date. So it is a very simple formula. You can see in Excel. Actually, by the way, Excel uh, Excel files are publicly available, uh, and you can you can uh, you can play with them uh, yourself. And uh, on in in column uh, E, uh, we have the so-called in parallel work items delivered. If we, you recall that uh, if we have, let's say, on July 20th, four work items delivered at the same date, one of them had a uh, attack time of, uh, of uh, one day, and the other three actually ha will have a attack time of zero days. So this means the, uh, these four were delivered in parallel. This is a very important uh, point here, uh, uh, so it's it's uh, it's worth remembering. So we have here calculated the parallels, which is really easy calculation as well, and we end up uh, with the sum of all parallels down here. Uh, and uh, based on the on the data on the values here in the tag time column, uh, using Excel, we can uh, quite easily. Uh, populate a pivot table, which is automatically done, uh, and you can see that uh, 43 items uh, were delivered, uh, had attack time with one day, 
and for instance we have one work item with tag time of 21 days and this one if you are interested was uh, during the the first leg of the Z curve if you remember that's that's the, the leg when the phase of the project where we set up uh, and then uh, and also we may uh, do some experiments and in this particular case it was an experiment uh, being uh, uh, being run back then and it took actually took 21 days to prove a, a technology uh, related approach so uh, here based on the uh, on the pivot table we uh, we can uh, we can uh, populate uh, manually uh, uh, another like the distribution but uh, with this time with all uh, work items delivered in parallel added so they uh, uh, of course they have a tag time of zero days and here in the upper right corner here hopefully you can see it it's the the, the histogram based on this uh, table so you can see it's uh, it's quite uh, mm, like uh, typical histogram for tag time so we have bunch of items uh, with zero tag time and then some items with one, two, three, and even uh, as we saw, uh, one work item uh, with 21 days of uh, of tag time. So what's the next step? So next step is to uh, generate the average tag time distribution for each of the Z curves, uh, the legs of the Z curve, based on this data. So here you can see. Uh, each leg I have highlighted in a different shade of uh, blue. So the first leg of the Z curve ends here. That's the end of the first leg. And then we start the second leg, deeper blue. And the third leg actually it's it's like in the deepest blue uh, of this uh, type of blue. And uh, what I what I did, I just uh, copied the data from let's say from the first leg of the Z curve, and uh, I'll show and I'll, I'll calculate the average time distribution for uh, for this particular leg. Uh, so let's get back to the presentation. So uh, let's follow the algorithm. Uh, so this is the this that's the data that I just showed in Excel. So it was uh, the, our baseline project. Is uh, it was a project for a Fortune 500 company. Technology uh, uh, used was uh, Java, Spring, and Oracle. Uh, delivery time of uh, 199 days. Project scope to 238 items. And uh, you see how the scope was uh, mm, uh, divided into the to the over the three legs of the Z curve. So during the f the first leg, uh, the team delivered 42 storage. Uh, work items uh, over the second leg the team delivered uh, 161 uh, and then on the third leg over the third leg the team delivered 21 uh, user stories so that's the data that I just showed in Excel and now we are following the, the algorithm so again what we are trying first to 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 have is uh, this distribution this is the average time distribution for each of the legs of the Z curve. And as you can see, they are quite different. The shapes are different. Also, the values are different. And uh, what we'll be using this uh, distribution for is to actually uh, Calculates uh, 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 calculate the delivery time for our next project. So that's, if you recall the formula. Uh, so we have work items multiplied by average tag time for the first leg. Uh, work items again 70, let's say, multiplied by the average distribution of the average tag time for the second leg, and uh, work items multiplied by the average tag time for the third leg. And according to the formula, actually, it will give us the distribution of the delivery time for uh, for our future project. But let get let's get back to to the calculation again. So I'll show you briefly how you uh, how we actually uh, find the distribution of average tag time for 
only the, the for the second leg of the Z curve for our baseline project. Uh, the, for the first and third leg, uh, the procedure is exactly the same. So here, what I do, uh, what I've done actually, is that uh, I have uh, um, this data only for the first leg of the Z curve. Uh, for for like uh, for the second, let's excuse me for the second. This shade of blue, and I just copy and paste it in this uh, particular second leg of the Z curve. We had uh, uh, we have uh, 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 item with average tag time with three, 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 one, one, one. So that's the distribution which comes again from here. That's the values. I just copy the values for the second leg of the Z curve. No summation here, no aggregation, it's just the values as it happened. And then I paste it here, see? And I add all the, the work items with zero tag time or work items delivered in parallel because they are part, they are part of the distribution. So that's the, that's the sample that we have for the second leg. And we will be simulating uh, this leg uh, a thousand times. So the technique that uh, that we'll be using uh, is called uh, resampling, or draw uh, without uh, draw with replacement. So here, uh, what I've done is uh, using Excel. I I uh, randomly at random I pick a number from one to sixty-two because here. We have 62 values in this column. So I pick a number between uh, 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 1 and, and, uh, and uh, 62. And uh, based on the index, uh, I, I just have uh, here uh, a sample. Uh, I just uh, resample from the, from the uh, population of, of tag time for this particular Z curve. A lack of the Z curve. So and uh, and here, uh, so just to just to show you what how it works. So here I have let's say uh, you can see zero 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 zero. Uh, here we have three. But uh, when I calculate the sheet, uh, it will it will uh, resample again. So let's see what will happen. You see the numbers are changing, right? In in C. C C3, uh, uh, the cell, it was zero before that, and when I click calculate, it is constantly changing. Let's wait for it. It takes uh, some time. And it is, it, is, uh, it is a random sampling from the data that we have for this particular leg of the Z-curve. And based on this data, I have here a very simple formula, and what I do, I actually sum up all resampled values from here. And uh, if you recall, that's, that should be the length of the second leg of the Z-curve. But what you can see here is that actually uh, each summation is different. It is a function of Excel called data table, but and I, here I have 1,000 times the same thing done. So 1,000 times what we are doing, first we sample new set of values here, then we sum them up. Then we sample again, new set of values, sum them up. Sample again, sum them up. And that's, that's being done 1,000 times, and if, if you just see what is happening. So when I say calculate again, and the numbers in column F here are changing. Every time they are changing. What we are doing, I am simulating 1,000 times this particular leg of the Z-curve based on a historical data for a real project. So as if I am running this particular leg 1,000 times, 1,000 times. And what what actually I will end up is uh, I will end up with uh, the distribution of uh, 
of uh, this delivery time for this particular data and it, 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 it is presented here and also in order to find the, the average stack time for each run remember the formula was that we divide the, um, the delivery time on the scope, the number of work items here and we end up with uh, a value for average stack time and because I have 1,000 runs of the of the uh, of the delivery time, I end up with 1,000 uh, values for the average stack time. And here we can see the mm, some uh, some diagrams. So uh, uh, the the uh, the green one is the simulated delivery time for the second leg of the Z curve, and below the the blue one is the simulation of the average stack time and you can see how they actually change. I, I'll hit calculate and and they are changing, right? Hopefully it's visible that after, so the shape is changing and one might say well it's actually it's uh, every time we end up with a different uh, 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 simulation of the data is different but what is not changing is here the values that we are interested in. The median delivery time, the average delivery time, and the 85th percentile. So if you look again here in this in this table, even though the shape is changing, Nabidian is always 62. The average is around 62 and the 85th percentile is around 73. So I'll run it again. Let's wait. You can see that there is a consistency and we are not interested in the shape. Uh, shape is quite modeled by like the mode. Is it, like, it's, we are not interested right now in the shape. We are interested in the median, the average and mostly in the 85th percentile. And the same applies for the average tag time distribution. Again, here are the values for the average tag time distribution for this leg of the Z-curve. And you can see the median is uh, 0 0.38, the average is 0 0.30, almost the same and 85th percentile is 0 0.45. So I, let's run it again and you can see the shape here will be changing but the values are not changing. The What we are interested in, especially the 85th percentile is never changing. So again, just for your benefit, I'll run it again and, and that's what we have for, uh, uh, let me get back here and we end up with the distribution for each of the legs of the Z curve for our baseline projects. What we'll be doing with this distribution is just keep it in a safe place and use it for pre projection uh, for predicting our the delivery time for our next project, which I'll show you uh, shortly. So when we have them, we will again uh, we will try to predict uh, a new project. Uh, the new project will be uh, for uh, mm, uh, we have to plan a new project and provide the customer with the delivery date. So uh, we we have our baseline project and we'll be using this. So the project, the new project, actually is for the same client. It's for it's, it will be uh, done by the. Uh, same team, same team will be working on it and uh, the team will be using the same technology. What we, which actually means that uh, our stochastic information packet contain, which contains the average time distribution for each of the three legs of the Z-curve can be used in this instance. Right? This is a project that we have data for a similar project. It's, it's something that we, 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 we have data about. Uh, and then uh, and then uh, uh, after some analysis, let's say the team uh, 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 would break down the requirements uh, of the new project into user stories and then has uh, so uh, audio pro can you can you can I be heard well okay it's, it should be better now hopefully uh, so for our new project uh, the team uh, the team uh, has broken down the, the scope into user stories and then has added some more work items 
to account for dark matter and failure load. This is a topic that we will not be uh, spending time today, dark matter and failure load. But uh, uh, after that, the team uh, decided that uh, 12 storage will be delivered in the first leg of the Z curve. 70 storage will be delivered in the second uh, leg of the Z curve. And uh, the rest of the, uh, which is 18 uh, stories of uh, work items, will be delivered during the third leg of the Z curve. So that's after the analysis. And right now we'll have to uh, to make projections for the delivery date. So again, uh, what what the what formula we'll be using. So we have uh, the team decided you can see that twelve work items will be delivered during the first leg. Uh, and we have the average stack time distribution for the first leg. So according to the formula we will be multiplying twelve by the distribution. Well it's quite difficult actually to uh, to multiply single number by, dis by distribution and then 70 work items will be delivered during the second leg of the Z curve and we have the distribution of the average stack time for the second leg and uh, 18 work items will be delivered during the third leg of the, dis of the Z curve. Uh, the sum of all these three uh, parts will give us the simulated time needed to deliver the new project. So here we are multiplying numbers with distributions. Let's see how this can be done using Microsoft Excel. So here in, in, this, uh, in this sheet uh, we, have, uh, we have a table. And uh, in the first column, in the B column of the table, we have the distribution, our SIP, for the first leg of the average stack time for the first leg of the Z curve. Remember, we did this like uh, a few minutes ago, and it's in our vault, and we use it right now. Uh, and then we have uh, the distribution of the average stack time for the second leg of the Z curve and we have the distribution of the average stack time for the third leg of the Z curve. And yes, if, you can, if you recall, that actually we had 1,000 runs for each of the legs, and here we have 1,000 entries for each of the legs. Yes, here, 1,000 entries. So what we'll be doing, uh, here we, we are populating the number of work items that will be delivered, 100 in total. And for the, it, during the first leg, uh, the Z-curve will be delivering 12. During the second leg, 70. And the third leg, 18 work items. And we will be uh, simulating the delivery date for our new project based on the number of work items here and the distributions for average type time for each of the Z-curve. So the formula is really uh, like simple although quite long. So we have a summation, you can see sum, we are summing up three things. So the first thing is a, uh, is a, um, uh, is, is a multiplication by the, the number of work items that will be delivered uh, during the first leg of the Z-curve by the, uh, the distribution of the average stack time. And what we are doing we are doing uh, it 20,000 times. So in this column, we will run the project, we will simulate the project 20,000 times. We can do it 50,000 or even outside Excel like a million times, but uh, 20,000 is more than enough. So what this formula actually is doing, uh, well first we take 12 here, yeah, and on random we pick one of the values in this column, thousand values, thousand possible values, and we multiply 12 by a, a random number, a random value, and we end up with uh, a random, like simulate random value for the first leg of the Z-curve. And then we have the 70 work items and multiply by a random pick from the average stack time from the second leg of the Z-curve, and add, we'll, uh, we'll be adding up to the first item, and then 18 work items we multiply by a random pick from this table, this column. And we end up with a random simulated 
length of the sum of the three legs of the Z curve. And here we have it done 50,000 times. And what we'll need to end up, it, we will need this particular distribution here in this table. We also need the median, the average, and the 85th percentile of the projected delivery time. And it's good to have it like visualized in a diagram. So what we'll be doing, I'll, cal I'll hit calculate sheet. It's crunching numbers, crunching. And we end up with a run with like after 50,000 simulation of the, this new project, we see that the median uh, delivery time will be 77 days, the average will be 78, and the 85th percentile will be uh, 90 days. Again, the, the shape will change, like I can run it again, one additional 50,000 times, and the shape will change, but the, and it's, a, it's another topic while it's changing, but the median, the average, and the 85th percentile are the same, almost the same, right? You can see that there are small differences, but remember we are measuring in days, so there is no, uh, no need for this, and we are, uh, let's not worry, and let's get back to, to the, sorry, to the PowerPoint. So when we do this, we end up with this, that's the important point. So here we are interested in the 85th percentile of the projected uh, delivery time, and uh, uh, and uh, based on the projected delivery time histogram, uh, we can actually end up with a single number, which in our case is around 90 days. So for this project, uh, if we if we work if we run this project seven times, then six times out of these seven, we should have the project delivered for less than 90 days. Less than 90 days. And these 90 days will be the delivery time that we will communicate to the client and we'll have it in the project charter. So we can select 85th percentile, which is quite a safe projection, too much safety in it. Uh, 80, 85th percentile, again, means six times out of seven, we will end up before uh, 90 days. Important thing is that just to remind you that you can see here the median in 77 days. So according to this uh, simulation, 50% of the cases the project will end up less than in less than 77 days. That's really important, right? So 85th percentile is it's really safe bet because most of the time, at least 50% of the time, actually we will deliver quite early. Uh, so I believe I have uh, uh, just uh, one minute more. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your attention. And my hope is that you will start using this approach for uh, higher level planning your next project. So hopefully uh, there will be time for questions. Sorry if I took uh, a bit longer. <laughs> no problem, Dimitar. That was a great and very fascinating presentation. Uh, so I'd like to uh, invite uh, Ramesh to uh, start off. Uh, uh, the Q&A session and uh, of course we got a number of uh, uh, questions from the audience as well and hopefully we can get to some of them uh, after that. Ramesh, uh, please start. And you might be on mute Ramesh so we can't hear you yet. I said somehow I am unable to see the audience questions so I was not able to gauge what the audience's uh, uh, interest, you know, in what areas are interested in. Uh, I think I think this is uh, a, a fascinating talk and and gives uh, a good insight into what can be done. And uh, as a background, I've been interested in uh, statistically understanding and forecasting based on on Kanban methods. And as you can see, uh, simulator was one attempt. Uh, statistically forecasting uh, cumulative distribution, uh, cumulative uh, you know chart was another one. So, so effectively the approach, if I summarize it at top level, tries to characterize the arrival process of the cards in the done column or done uh, state and then based on that uh, 
uh, forecast how how the done will happen. So I want to make sure uh, uh, you know the the the, the, the most important uh, question really is uh, what are the underlying statistical assumptions uh, that uh, one needs to make uh, in order to apply this kind of technique. Richard. Uh, so uh, again, uh, the, yes. Thank you for the question. So the most important thing is that uh, uh, we should not forget that we cannot compare one development system's historical delivery data with another one. So this is uh, uh, this is a context specific context specific data, and uh, the stochastic information packet, in this case the distribution of average time, tag time, is unique per uh, development organization or team, per uh, business domain and technology. So again, if uh, uh, the team structure is changed or development process use is changed or technology being used is changed or the client actually is a different client, so we should find a new baseline project in order to predict our future projects, right? It's really context specific and it is in, in line with uh, what uh, is uh, being uh, like a part of the Kanban method from the beginning. Uh, this uh, context awareness, which so as, they, as we say context is everything. Okay. Hope it answered your question. Yeah. And and uh, the uh, the other other question is: Does one have to go through a stochastic uh, model, or uh, in other words, one could take the raw data and uh, perhaps sample it more times to get the same kind of uh, final output, or? Uh, an extra step of averaging is necessary to to, to get the uh, robustness in the solution. So, uh, important part again. Another important part is that we are not uh, uh, using only averages. Uh, we are using distributions, and yeah. actually, Monte Carlo is the method for uh, summing up distributions or multiplying yeah. distributions or anything. And without Monte Carlo. We should, uh, we would end up using only averages, uh, which will not give us the safety. Like, how could we know uh, which is the 85th percentile without seeing the distribution and the median value, which is something that will should give us uh, confidence in our bid? Because uh, uh, I usually use this approach for fixed bid projects, where we should, we could not get uh, like using iterations and we have to provide a bit in front and commit actually and deliver according to the bit. Okay, Mahesh, can we take an audience question? Sure. So, um, uh, uh, Demeter, one of the early questions that was asked and you referred just now to uh, baseline projects, uh, one of the questions was, what if you have no baseline project or what is the criteria to make a project a baseline versus, you know, not similar enough to be a baseline? Is there some guideline that you can uh, provide here? Uh, if you if you are let's say we, you have a, a new client or a new technology to be used, uh, obviously there will be no baseline project. So in this case, in this case, I would suggest uh, using uh, uh, the work that Troy McGuinness uh, actually did on uh, uh, estimating based on uh, uh, finite, a very small set of data, and uh, which gives me like. A, the, the occasion to, to say that this content is inspired and based on ideas from David J. Anderson, Troy McGuinness and Alex A. Glov. And uh, Troy has quite a good uh, approach for uh, uh, predicting based on, let's say, if you have only three uh, data, uh, data points, let's say, your uh, best case estimate, your uh, Worst case estimate, you can actually come up with uh, with some kind of a statistical uh, um, uh, distribution. But again, uh, my approach is there is for uh, organizations which uh, keep collect historical data. If you are using uh, any kind of agile 
or Kanban method, you should uh, have uh, plenty of historical data. If you are using uh, a tool as a digital Swift Kanban, you, you will have plenty of data. Most of the organization will never use it, and this is one of the uh, uh, ways you can uh, make use of your data. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, a couple of people have asked uh, similar questions, so I'm going to try and paraphrase them. So uh, the question is, why use the 85th percentile, not the 80th or the 95th? And uh, why not forecast uh, with a range of range as 50 and 85 percentiles? Two two separate questions. Yeah, so uh, it's it's a very good question. So 85th percentile is my let's say personal uh, choice. It's uh, I I am in the uh, I would say I, the way we we manage is that. Uh, we should always take some uh, well risk, right? Uh, I mean uh, that something bad will happen. But if uh, if you see my uh, my screen right now, 85th percentile actually is not that risky, because again, from this data that we just and it is statistically statistically uh, generated data, it's it's real it's it's, it's real. You can you can assume it's real data, right? 50,000 runs of a project. Uh, the median time, the median actually is the gravity center of the distribution, so uh, if we say it's 77 days, so half of the cases, like out of 50,000 cases, 25,000 runs of the same project will be less than the median value, right? So if we say actually half of the times we, we execute this project, it will be less than 77 days, right? People, you, you, we usually forget that we, when we say there is a 50% chance of meeting a delivery time, uh, like or not meeting, there is a 50% chance to, to actually to meet it. And 85th percentile, again, is my personal choice. Uh, people could go with 95, but 95 in this case was around uh, more than uh, 112 days. Uh, and it is too much, right? Uh, usually when we do fixed bit, we have to be competitive. We have to be aggressive. And it's a, it's a, it depends on the level of, uh, of uh, uh, the risk that the organization uh, is ready to take. Correct, correct. Okay, the business uh, and the risk uh, combination uh, determine that. Exactly, exactly. Right, right. Um, Another question that is there uh, is how are you able to determine how many work items appear in each leg in your in your Z curve? Uh, I would think that the first leg uh, stories uh, experiments drive the number of items that will appear in the later legs. Uh, exactly. So thank you for this question. Uh, so uh, first leg is again it's a setup time, but mostly it's for it's time for failure, right? For for experimenting. This is the time when the team actually allocates for doing experiments and we assume that some of the experiments will fail, right? So actually the team, after analyzing the scope, uh, should decide what kind of experiments the team will try and, uh, and that's actually the number of work items. So in this, as we do it in this leg of the Z-curve, we, uh, we have experiments, right? Things that we try, uh, sometimes uh, uh, maybe a kind of a design to be prepared in order to convince the client that our approach is sound. So things like that. So it is up to the team to decide, right? And uh, based on the on the decision for the first leg, the team should actually decide to, if, let's say, one of the experiments is a success, then we, we the work, the, our path will be clear and it will be just sustainable pace, right? Let's say 70 items it will be just work, right? That's, that's how, I, how we do it. And the third leg, it's, uh, I would say, the number of defects usually that the team actually expects to have or uh, last uh, minute changes that uh, team expects to come for, for, from the client. And uh, usually the number of defects should be, again, part of the historical data for a sound uh, development organization. And I believe a tool as uh, uh, Swift Kanban can uh, provide you with such data automatically. Perfect. Uh, one question about the sampling. Uh, is you said that if you only introduced uh, uh, you know, randomness sampling in the initial distribution, isn't that good enough uh, you know, just to take the average when forecasting? Or why, I mean, the question is why introduce randomness again? Or, or is there a, I think there may be some misunderstanding in the way that you talked about. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah so that's a, that's, a, that's a technique, statistical technique called uh, resampling and or bootstrapping. Uh, it's, uh, it came from, uh, like here, uh, hopefully you can see a book called uh, Flow of Averages. So it's a really nice book. I, I highly recommend to everybody that actually will try to use any kind of calculations uh, involved that will involve averages. I right? think this book, in a very sound and simple uh, manner, all the math, let's say Jensen's inequality, is presented with uh, uh, examples from real life, not from only project management, but uh, financing, uh, finance industry. Uh, any kind of, uh, of, of uh, business domain and it is highly like it explained why we should uh, not go with averages uh, uh, why, how actually this, this technique resampling is being let me let me just explain how resampling like kind of a more uh, like colorful so let's say we have uh, let's say we have uh, our sample we are we are sampling let's say uh, the average time it takes us to, to go from home to work, like average commute time. And let's say we have only five uh, points, data points. On, we measured only five. And let's say one is, let's say we have uh, in, in, let's say, in minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, right? And we, we, we write uh, down these values on a piece of paper. We put it in a hat and we just at random pick pick a value out of this, right, out of the head. And that's, that's one, actually we at random pick one of the instances, right, that might happen, that have happened to us. And that's the, that's the nature and the meaning, a simple explanation of the resampling technique. But again, please read the book. It's really, it will worth it, definitely for everybody. Uh, so, Dimitar, since you're showing the slide, a uh, couple of questions, uh, a couple of people asked the question, what is exact, what exactly is SIP? Um, can you give a quick... Uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, uh, uh, so SIP stands for uh, uh, Stochastic uh, Information uh, Packet. So, uh, it represents an uh, uncertainty as an array of possible outcomes. So, again, if I, if I, uh, if I get back to this sample with uh, with the number of our commute time in a head, uh, like and when we uh, we have let's say the number of data points, that's our number of uh, of uh, data points of possible outcomes, right? So what we have in in cases of a project, let's say uh, we have just the num the an array of possible delivery times for this type of project. That's uh, it's called stochastic information packet. I took it from the flow of averages because it sounds quite scientific <laughs> based, right? But in general, it's a distribution. If you think about it, it is just a distribution of something. It might be distribution of your commute time. It might be distribution of income in your neighborhood. It might be anything. It is just a distribution of something. Got it, got it. Um, Another question which is interesting, especially when you're looking at, uh, you know, um, uh, similar projects of data from across projects. So uh, how realistic are SIP packets valid across projects? Even if a team member changes between two projects, uh, are the prior SIP packages still relevant for prediction? Yeah, again, I, it's uh, usually if the team structure is changed, uh, the, the distribution or the SAP packet, uh, packet should, should be invalidated. But it again depends on the, on the, on the context, right? So if, right. if uh, so it, we might, we might re replace a team member with a even better team, like better technician or a better communicator. So it's up to us to decide, right? If the project, if the uh, the distribution is invalidated, right? So it's on a case by case basis. But in a in a mature organization, especially a organization that is running, let's say, Scrum or Kanban, where we keep the team and hopefully we have self-organized teams, right? So the team as such, we keep it, right? And it's uh, it is something that we can rely on, right? And uh, and in these cases. Uh, the, like the team structure should really change, right? Of course, it right. uh, always happens. But again, it's it, it is context specific. It is case by case basis. What I presented is the approach, the concept, and the method. The application 
it's up to you to apply in your specific context, right? It is just the approach and the method, the course. Absolutely. Uh, so, final couple of questions. Uh, one uh, is about, you know, what has been your experience with the prediction versus the actual? So, do you have data that compares uh, the prediction to the actual project after the project got done? Um, and how good was the prediction? Yeah, uh, the thing is that uh, most of the time when we predicted uh, the project, uh, we actually end up in, uh, in, in green. So it, it was a successful prediction. But uh, it's not all the time, right? We have had uh, one, especially I can recall quite a big uh, overrun in terms of uh, delivery time. And it was because uh, we uh, miss, uh, miss kind of uh, we we messed up the the first leg of the zikr so we told that the, it was a new technology it was a quite really new technology and we told that uh, the new the team will will the learning curve uh, will not be that steep right and the team will embrace technology quite faster than actually it was the case so it was a, uh, like a decision that we we made it was a, it was a, end, end up ended up to, uh, to be a wrong decision so the technology was a bit more uh, difficult to learn and actually because of the first leg of the Z curve took longer than expected everything else was actually longer so I, I, I again uh, the, the approach is, is sound it is scientifically based but uh, we are, it, it, it should be the, the application is context specific and it's up to a skillful team uh, to decide actually let's say the number of work items that we'll be experimenting with, right? So I, I don't have 100 percent success rate unfortunately. Uh, but the thing is that we are, we are in outsourcing and we are dealing um, every most of our projects are for new customer like a new new technology it's, it's quite uh, changing uh, for us uh, which is sometimes quite interesting. Of course it's to be expected. Right, uh, and uh, the final question for today. There are still a number of questions that I haven't taken up, but okay. uh, this one got yeah. asked by a few people. That uh, can they? Would you be? Would you be willing to share the template that you had, the Excel template that you have? Uh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, uh, the presentation I presented it is available even right now uh, on SlideShare, and all the links are there. If you go to SlideShare.net uh, and just search for. Uh, for probabilistic planning or Monte Carlo simulation, uh, I will. Uh, the links are there, and also, as uh, you Manesh said, uh, the presentation will be available to all uh, uh, to Digite, and uh, all the Excel files will be available to uh, to all participants. So, so it's in the public domain, right? So it's it's all public. Perfect. So then I wanted to say that uh, uh, you know to all the people in the audience that. Uh, please feel free to reach uh, reach out to Demeter, uh, you know, with any questions that you have uh, following this session, as well as of course uh, to discuss specifically the template or uh, his overall presentation. Uh, the contact information for Demeter, as well as for Dr. Ramesh Patel, is shared there. And uh, also, I invite uh, you know uh, people in the audience to um, write to us and see if you'd like to uh, try out the uh, the um, Swift Sim package that we provide uh, on a uh, on a beta mode right now. Uh, we, we have I'm very happy to hear from you as well. Uh, so with that, I'd like to wrap up. Uh, Demeter and uh, Ramesh, thank you so much for a, for an excellent presentation. Uh, uh, you know, very stimulating in terms of the the the, the discussion and, and in just in the way that it brings out a completely different perspective to project planning and 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 the ability to forecast uh, the project performance based on uh, you know all of the information that you have uh, at the start of a project, which is obviously a very difficult task for. Uh, majority of the teams uh, that uh, that do technology projects or other kinds of uh, uh, projects. Uh, Ramesh, any closing thoughts from your side? Uh, the only thing I wanted to say is uh, uh, I have actually uh, you know implemented his tech, uh, Demeter's technique, uh, and and run simulation on my data set, historical data set, and uh, actually confirmed that it it matches the forecast versus the next three months of my data in, in some ways. So just a validation run. And I've also validated against instead of using average tacket time, 
to use average throughput. And again, the, the, the two techniques result in almost identical forecasts. So uh, the mathematics uh, and uh, the, the, the whole uh, methodology is fairly sound as long as uh, you say, okay, I'm willing to characterize the arrival process in the done queue and use that as a basis for my simulation of forecasting. That's the summary. Uh, and if I may, a few words from, uh, from myself, Manish, just a sentence. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, this approach can be used uh, uh, by any development organization uh, independent of the development process used. Uh, waterfall, Scrum, Kanban systems, you name it. So it is independent of the development process used. All you need to know is the arrival process or com work exactly. completion process uh, statistically described. Exactly. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you uh, to the audience uh, for, for uh, attending today's webinar and for staying till the end. Uh, we've had some uh, really good uh, participation from the audience, some great questions. Uh, again, uh, feel free to reach out to us with additional questions that you have.